He says, son, your sins are forgiven you. That's kingdom. The kingdom has come. Forgiveness of sin is now available. This king is also the savior. This king is one who gave his life on the cross of Calvary. He's the one that makes possible salvation. So he says, son, your sins are forgiven you. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that. Be still and know. Be still and know that I. This is God's word for you. Be still. No matter what you're going through. Attention all pastors, Sam P. Chaladurai invites you to a pastor seminar at AFT Chennai on the 21st, 22nd and 23rd of January 2015, every day from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Please note that all messages will be in Tamil only. Prior registration with a fee of rupees 600 is required. You can register online at www.revsam.org or you can call us at the numbers on the screen. We look forward to seeing you there. Christianity is not a message about pie in the sky. It's about the blessings that can be enjoyed right now. I, I know that it's not a perfect world. I know, you know, this is not heaven. I know all of that. And therefore, you see all these problems and difficulties and all of that. But I also know in the midst of all this, I can experience and taste heaven in a real way. I'm not saying everything is perfect here. I'd be foolish to say that everything is perfect here. But in the midst of it, I can, in, to some extent, I can enjoy God's presence, God's power, God's blessings, everything here in the now, you see. That's what the kingdom message is all about. So Jesus was preaching. And the power of God was there to heal. So if you preached only about salvation, forgiveness of sin, then there will be only people that are receiving forgiveness of sin and salvation. If you preached about healing also, there will be preaching people getting healed. People getting delivered. If you preach about blessing also, then people will be getting blessed. They'll be forgiven of their sins. They'll get healed. They'll get blessed. Preach, pre preach about prosperity. People will become prosperous. Hello. <laughs> whatever you preach, because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So whatever you preach, that is what people will access and have, receive. 
Because the preaching tells them this is yours. And therefore they begin to believe and appropriate these things. So obviously Jesus was preaching there. And I can imagine what he preached. I can imagine the gospel. I've already told you the, what the message contained. But I can imagine where, as a preacher I always think about how, how would have Jesus preached. What is the message that Jesus... I would have very much liked to have heard him. But I can pull it out of here. Out of the Bible. By various incidences. What he would have preached. For example, in Luke chapter 5, you don't have to look at it. You remember the story where Peter and his friends were fishing. They fished all night. Got nothing. Peter was washing his nets, ready to go home. Total failure that day. No income. Not one paisa, Not one penny was made that day. You know. And ready to get home, and Jesus comes and says, can I borrow your boat? And he wanted to preach and teach from that boat. And Jesus borrowed the boat, and people gathered, and he teach, taught them. And after he finished teaching, he calls Peter and says, come bring your net. He has already folded up his net. He said, come bring your net. Cast it in the deep, he says. And Peter, a professional fisherman, and Jesus has nothing to do with fishing, you know. He doesn't belong to that community. He doesn't belong to that profession. He has nothing to do with fishing. Jesus says, cast your net in the deep. And professional fisherman Peter comes and says, Lord, we tried to catch fish all night. We caught nothing. We toiled all night. So we, hard labor. We worked all night. And I know this place every inch, you know, where fish is and where, no, where there's no fish. Don't tell me there's any fish there. We toiled all night, got nothing. But, he says, nevertheless, at your word, we will cast our nets. At your word. Nevertheless, at your word. Now, what made him come to the conclusion that even though as a professional fisherman, he knew that it's impossible to catch fish in the morning. Only at night you do it. And you tried all night and you caught nothing. How is it that you're going to catch fish in the same place? Right now. And how is it possible in broad daylight? I, I tell you, I can guarantee you this. He heard some preaching that caused him to arrive at the conclusion that he can now cast his net at Jesus' words. Amen. He must have heard something. What must he have heard? I believe he must have heard about faith. He must have heard about how that faith is not only about Jesus and who he is and about uh, the message of the kingdom. The faith is also about the power of God that does the impossible. That's part of the kingdom. You see. That must be the kind of message that Jesus would have preached. Look at the Sermon on the Mount. Talking about what you shall eat, what you shall drink and what you shall be clothed with. Don't worry, he says. Because your heavenly Father knows that you have need of these things. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Look at the kind of preaching. Look at how many verses in the Sermon on the Mount. He's talking about human needs and daily, day-to-day -day needs and challenges and problems and worries and cares of people and how God cares and how God meets the needs of people. I, I don't think it would have been any different than that. That is why the crowds came. The Pharisees were preaching no crowd. They were jealous of Jesus because the crowds came to Jesus. Why didn't the crowds come to Pharisees meeting? You know for a Pharisee, I could tell you what Pharisees preached. They preached about how holy they were. How they've been living such a holy life. How they've been impeccable in keeping the law. How they've been very picky about everything that they did and kept the law to the dot and the line. They would have taught about how many days to fast. Very important part of their teaching. Have you fasted this week? How many days have you fasted this month? You know, they would have taught that. They would have taught about how, what your clothes must be like. How long it should be. How short it shouldn't be. How long your hair can be. One fellow told me one time, it's all right, brother, you're teaching all these positive stuff, but you must also preach that. I said, what? All that stuff. People need that, brother. See some of them, how they come. They need that. 
I said, they get up in the morning, take a shower, put petrol in their car, and drive all this way, and spend all this time. They work six days a week, morning till late at night. And then the Saturday, Sunday morning, they get up and come and beat others to the place that they want to get in here, and come and sit in here to hear the message. And you want me to preach about how long their hair should be, and uh, <laughs> you know, how many days you fasted this week? <laughs> You've got to be kidding, you know, you, you've got to have no, nothing upstairs here to be preaching something like that and think that people will come. I'm not that big a fool, you know. People have a lot of problems, they have a lot of difficulties, they have a lot of needs, they have a lot of worries, they have a lot of cares. They have a lot of, they have, they have, they have, they have, they have problems that they can't even go to anybody and speak about it and tell anybody about it. Their heart is broken many times. They're hurting and they come and you want me to preach about how long the hair should be and how long the dress should be? And how many days they must fast? I'm sure they've tried fasting and all that before. Some of the people to fix their problems, they're ready to try everything. I'm going to preach faith because faith works. I'm going to preach faith because faith changes things. I'm going to preach faith because faith will bring the power of God into our situations. Faith is about the power to change things. I'm going to preach faith because faith will do the impossible. And people want to hear that. That is why they come. You should see in some of our Tamil services, about 200 people will be standing and hearing. The whole service. You're sitting, they'll be standing here. Around the walls. Just standing with their Bibles and hearing the whole sermon. Attending the whole worship. Standing without any complaints. Very astonishing thing. Why would they come? Why would they... I said, I'm not a fool to preach. I don't preach that Pharisaic sermon. That's why. Because this is serious business. <laughs> Jesus was like that. Wherever Jesus preached, there was a crowd because he was preaching something like this. <laughs> Remember the time uh, when he was preaching, we went on and on talking some wonderful stuff. You know, you, I think you find it in Luke chapter 11. You know, he teaches a lot of things and, and right in the middle of his preaching, a woman was hearing him all this time and she could not hold herself. She just could not keep quiet. You know, nowadays we tweet, we don't shout. You know, we just immediately pick up our phone, you know. We're, we're tweeting. <laughs> While the news is going on, everybody's tweeting. Their tweeting was not available at that time. She was standing, this, that was a time when everything was raw, you know. That, before, that was before the days of the cell phone, you know. She was standing in the crowd. She just could not help but respond to Jesus in some way. Right in the middle of his speech, she cried out with a loud voice. She shouted it out. You know what she shouted? She said, blessed be the womb that bore you and blessed be the breast that gave you suck, she said. She was so thrilled. She said, man, who is that? Who is your mother? May she be blessed for bringing you into this world. Who bore you? Who gave you milk to drink? May she be blessed. See how her heart is blessing this man who was preaching these wonderful, hope-giving, life-giving words to her. An ordinary woman standing in the crowd. If an ordinary woman can respond to the Christian message like that, I tell you we should never preach anything but that kind of message. It could cause the ordinary people to cry out and say, oh, what a wonderful word that I heard today. How wonderful these words are. I was hopeless, but I received hope. I was without any peace and any happiness. I received words that literally thrilled my heart. That's the Christian message, my friend. And what it contained, I can tell you, it surely contained the matter about healing. 
So many people are threatened with sickness and disease and all of these things. So many people are going through a mental kind of thing, you know, torment in their mind. They need healing of their past, their memories and their, 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 uh, the things that they've gone through and things that have affected them, things that have scarred them and left them wounded. People need mental healing. And Jesus included healing in his message for sure. Now listen. Verse 2 says he preached the word to them. Then they came to him, bringing a paralytic who was carried by four men. Now listen to this. That itself shows what he must have been preaching there and everywhere. Wherever he went, this is the kind of scene. They came to him, bringing a paralytic who was carried by four men. And when they could not come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was, so that they, they had broken through. They let down the bed on which the paralytic was lying. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven you. Let's stop right there. What's happening here? Here Jesus is preaching the word. And Luke says the power of God was there to heal people. Because so he was preaching not just some message about how you can, your sins can be forgiven and you go to heaven one day. No, he's preaching something about how certain blessings like healing can be enjoyed right now. That is why the power of God was there to heal people. Obviously. That's why the power of God was there to heal. And now, because of the crowd and the rush there, people couldn't even enter the door. They brought this paralytic man. And uh, that man must have had a lot of faith. Now, if you're laying down in your bed paralytic, maybe there are some relatives there that say, let's go to this meeting or let's go to this place where they pray and take you for prayer. But most of the time it's you who are sick have to have that uh, motivation, right? Without, see, without your motivation, nothing can happen. You'll have to get somebody. You'll have to cry out and say, get me some people. They need to carry me out there. I want to go there, you know. So this guy is someone that had faith, I think, because, you know, they carry him. Four men carry him. They bring him. And when they found there's no place to even enter at the door, I think he told them, get up the roof. Don't tell me you can't enter in. Don't tell me I can't get to Jesus. We've come all this way. We will get to Jesus. Get up the roof, open the roof, and drop me in there. If you'll just do that, then I'll pick up my bed and go home. We don't need you anymore. <laughs> just get me over there. If you will just get me over there, I can be sure that I can go home taking my bed on my shoulders. <laughs> That's the kind of faith the guy had. They open the roof, unbelievable, and they drop him. And look, lo and behold, Jesus looks at this man, lowered through the roof by four men who were carrying him, coming through the roof right where he's preaching, you know. <laughs> and <laughs> and, uh, and Jesus looks at him and he says, Son, your sins are forgiven you. <laughs> See where he begins. He didn't go through a big prayer and all of that. He knows that this man has got faith. So he starts where he must start. This is where we must start. He says, son, your sins are forgiven you. That's kingdom. The kingdom has come. Forgiveness of sin is now available. This king is also the savior. This king is one who gave his life on the cross of Calvary. He's the one that makes possible salvation. So he says, son, your sins are forgiven you. This kingdom has given me the authority and the power to declare that your sins are forgiven you by the authority of the kingdom of heaven. By the authority of the kingdom of God, I declare today that your sins are forgiven you, he says. And all the scribes there that were sitting there were upset immediately. <laughs> Instead of being glad, that this man's sins are forgiven. At least this man is hearing something nice. They were upset. They said, they got into a theological, 
wrangling there, you know. They said, only God has the power to forgive sins. Why does this man blaspheme like this? How can he say that he can forgive sins? Who is he to forgive sins? How can he say something like that? <laughs> Verse 6, and some of the scribes were sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Why does this man speak blasphemies like this? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they reasoned thus within themselves, he said to them, why do you reason about these things in your hearts? Which is easier, to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven you, or to say, arise, take up your bed and walk. Yeah. But that you may know that the Son of Man has the power on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, arise, take up your bed and go to your house. In other words, these fellows are questioning Jesus' authority in forgiving sins. And uh, Jesus says, which is easier, to say that your sins are forgiven you or to say, take up your bed and walk? Obviously, your sins are forgiven is where he must start. He is ready to receive it. He is the man that has, that paralytic is a man who has come with faith. He is ready to receive anything and everything that Jesus could give. He is ready for the whole message. He is ready to take forgiveness of sins. He is laying there. You know, he knows he's a sinner. He knows, uh, you know, uh, you know that, that he's not uh, uh, right before God and all of that. So when Jesus said, son, your sins are forgiven you, he just received it. He just received it in his heart. He believed it. He received it. Even though he couldn't see any changes outside, this is something spiritual that happens inside. See, this is the thing about salvation. Salvation is something that happens inside. Results are seen very slowly later on. Some fruits are seen outside. But basically, it's a thing that happens on the inside. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new, crea new creature. Old things are passed away. All things have become new. When I got saved, I looked at myself. It was the same old me. Nothing has changed. Same old, same old look, same old everything. What has changed? Something has changed inside. It is about the inside the statement is made that old things are passed away. All things have become new. It's something that has happened in the unseen spiritual inward realm. So this man accepts it. Inwardly he has received it. He's got faith and Jesus can look at this man and see that this man receives the message of the kingdom, receives the message of this king, receives this king and this savior. And then he looks at him and says, take up your bed and walk. In other words, he's saying, you received now your forgiveness of sin. I said to you, your sins are forgiven and you've received it. Now you believe you're a child of God. Now you believe that God loves you. Now you believe that you have God's favor. See, we go, to, we, we go somewhere and we get saved. We give our life to Jesus. We confess him as Lord and Savior, which we have never done before. Something happens and we come to the point where we make the decision to receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior. That's good. But once we receive that, we go home as a changed person. We talk about the change and we behave in a different way. From the next day onwards, we are a different person. We're reading the Bible, we're praying, we're going to church, we're hearing the teachings of God's word. Your activities are different. There are significant changes. Why? Now that you are saved, you begin to act like you are saved. That's a sign that you have received it. You have received your forgiveness of sins. You have received your salvation. Now Jesus is telling this man, you've received salvation, you've received forgiveness of sin, now receive your healing. He says, take up your eyes, take up your bed and walk. Now this is something he can do outwardly. It's very clearly outward thing. He can do something outwardly. When Jesus said, arise, take up your bed and walk, the man simply got up, just like he received salvation and the forgiveness of sin spoken by Jesus. He got up, and took his bed and went home. What does this show? You can receive forgiveness of sins. You can receive your healing also. Same package. This gospel is not just a gospel of forgiveness of sins and then heaven. No, this gospel is about forgiveness of sins 
and then there are some more blessings that is why jesus says in mark 11:24 he says you got some problem in your spirit in your soul in your body in your family in the work of your hands you got a problem you got a mountain like problem that nothing can move it nothing can do anything about it you got a problem that you're facing that's like a mountain jesus say speak to that mountain whatever you desire whatever is it that you want in your life whatever is the problem in your life whatever you want to be removed and be gone whatever you want to be established speak it in prayer he says attention all pastors sam p chelladura invites you to a pastor seminar at aft chennai on the 21st 22nd and 23rd of january 2015 every day from 9 am to 6 pm Please note that all messages will be in Tamil only. Prior registration with a fee of rupees 600 is required. You can register online at www.revsam.org or you can call us at the numbers on the screen. We look forward to seeing you there.